Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with WIPB-TV and Indiana Public Radio at Ball State University. Today we are chatting with Dan Lutz, Lori Georgie, and Michelle Kinsey, respectively General Manager, Director of Content, and Manager of Community Engagement at WIPB and Indiana Public Radio. They have generously agreed to share some of their experience with us. I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you. Public media is so important, particularly in a place like Muncie in this county. Talk about the origins of this station, which are so very interesting. In uh, 1970, uh, a group of women in the community um, were anxious to get a television station for educational programming within Muncie. And there were stations that had already opened up in Indianapolis and Fort Wayne, but the signals really weren't as strong um, in Muncie. So they approached um, one of our affiliates, the uh, Don Burton WLBC TV, and they started the EIC TV. Mm -hmm. And they started that, and um, then a year later, Ball St they sold the license to Ball State University. Ball State University went on the air in Halloween of 1971. And, right. and what was their motivation? Because they weren't, they didn't come from the broadcast region. They were, yeah. they right. were moms. Yeah, yeah, they were, and that is it. That's exactly it. They were moms who wanted their children to watch this new show at the time called Sesame Street. And so they already understood the value uh, of this important programming for young children. And they wanted to make sure that their children, they all had young children at home. They wanted to make sure that their children were a part of that and, and could watch that every day. Mm -hmm. And so it just really, I love that origin story because it really just shows you the power of, of moms, a power, the power of a group of people to get together and get something done for really the greater good, the good of the community. And I love that. Isn't that typically American and also typical of sort of the, the Indiana spirit of just sort of going out and doing something, creating value where value is needed? You just sort of, you, you set a target, Absolutely. and then you figure out how to do it. And it doesn't matter what, what, uh, what your background is, it doesn't right. matter what the impediments are, you just go, go, go. Absolutely. Exactly. And I think that has a lot to do with the, the rural areas in Indiana. There's a lot of rural areas in Indiana, and so they have to be creative to get what they want. And self-reliant. And self-reliant. <laughs> and so I think that uh, creates a lot of the things that you're talking about, the, the synergy of people wanting to do something to get something done because they live in areas that are rural and it's very important for them to be able to do it and they know that they're going to have to do it if they want to get it done. So in the early days the content that was provided was very much you, you function as a conduit for the national uh, services you still do that but Lori you're you 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 run uh, content for uh, both the television station and the radio station mm -hmm. Talk about the content that you have, what type of shows you, you produce here, what kind of uh, shows you transmit. One show we are very proud of, um, if we go back, back to 1984, was Bob Ross, The Joy of Painting. And so that was our claim to fame and is still going to this day on public television stations and has, um, was a really uh, a neat thing for us to be able to offer that out to other stations nationally. He had a wonderful manner uh, about him, how he could talk about uh, the, the construction of a work and then the use of paint to create an impression in the eye of the beholder that, that gave a sense of depth to these paintings uh, and his, his mellifluous voice and his <laughs> uh, very structured way but very gentle way of describing the act of putting paint on canvas. It was such an enjoyable experience, and that and that show went out across the nation. We also um, did doctor programs and a variety of programs. Arts Front Row programs. Center. Front Row Center mm -hmm. was an arts program that highlighted arts throughout um, the community and here at Ball State. But currently, we have uh, three programs that we're doing locally, and one is uh, the Roundtable, and the Roundtable is hosted by Michael Hicks, and he is the director of of the Business and um, Economics Research Center here at Ball State University. It's pretty well known throughout the state. Mm -hmm. um, and that is a, a popular show as well as Wellness Matters. Wellness Matters is a show that we do. It is a health show and it is um, hosted by Dr. Jeff Bird, who is the pre president of um, Ball Memorial Hospital, which is now IU Health. Um, and he, 
he actually hosted our Ask the Doctor for many, many years, and that was a live show. And now he's come back to host Wellness Matters, and that we do that as a taped show mm -hmm. and bring a variety of people um, throughout East Central Indiana to come and talk about different issues. And then we do a program called Now Entering, which is our newest program. And I'm going to turn that over to Michelle because she actually was the one that kind of got it started, and, and it's a very... It's a really neat, unique program. It is. It is. We love it. And uh, what it does is it allows us to engage uh, with residents that are in the small towns in our viewing area. And what I like to say it does is it kind of shines a light on these small towns that may not get a lot of coverage otherwise. And the creativity and works of, uh, of different people in those small towns. Absolutely, absolutely. But here's what takes it to the next level, Mark, in that, you know, we could obviously roll our truck up with some cameras and we could kind of determine amongst ourselves what we think those stories might be. But what makes Now Entering unique is that we ask the residents to take the ball from the beginning to the end. So they are the ones that are coming up with the stories. They are providing the photos and the videos to go along with those stories. And then our awesome crew uh, goes to their town on a production day and then we interview the residents on camera and then they become the narrators for their own stories. So these are truly you know, stories right from the residents that live there and they are the stories that they are most passionate about and they you know, cover a wide range of topics, not just your landmarks and your festivals and things like that, but favorite principals and a student run radio station and, you know, middle school kids talking about just what they do a day in the life of a middle schooler in this small town. Uh, so it's been it's been a wonderful experience for for us, for myself as as, you know, a community engagement project to get out in these communities and and engage with those with those people in the different towns, uh, but also for us to be able to present a pre pledge program right. based on it. So it's also we also raise money uh, that enables us to do the the next program. So it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's so important to the fabric of society that people get to tell their stories and right. get to share. Mm -hmm. And and the fact is is that creativity happens everywhere, right? Yeah. The, the these interesting. Um, lives are unfolding all around us, but we're blind to it because we are uh, so attentive to national media that is centrally produced or or syndicated media that also is controlled from some some place. To have viewer empowered television, right? Yes, that is such a gift, and it's so important. It's an important part of the public television uh, and public radio uh, uh, mission. Absolutely. One of the programs that we just started, and I'll let you take up, is the Facing Project on the radio mm -hmm. side. Um, we have, uh, it's, a, it's a nationally recognized organization, mm -hmm. the Facing Project, where they take stories from a community, and then they, t they, uh, they tie the storyteller with a professional writer. And then the writer writes their story, and then there's a reader that actually reads it. Mm -hmm. So what you have is a personalized story that is accurately told and then a professional site reader to read it. And the first show that we had, and I don't want to spoil this for anybody, but um, it was about a Muncie person who actually um, was going to attack or approach the um, Islamic Center and ended up being the president of the Islamic Center after all learning about it and everything. So it was a very, very important local story. But now we're getting into more national stories. We're getting So it's been a really good, it's just about what you're talking about. Yeah. People yes. telling their exactly. stories for the fabric of the betterment for the community. Right. And for the Facing Project, it's yeah. everybody kind of sharing uh, sharing a story in a right. way because they right. all do them around like a certain theme it might be right. poverty racism education right. Right. Uh, those types of themes and then understanding that oh wow you know we we do have something in common we have right. this shared experience and i didn't realize that we did and, and that's the only way to break it. down barriers in society so often i i am I, I am so struck with the fact that out of ignorance we talk about the other who we have not even talked with. We don't even know who our darn neighbors are. Right. Go out and wave, say hello, shake a hand, right. uh, exactly. find somebody who 
doesn't look like you and, and, and ask them how their day is. Absolutely. And that's what you're basically doing. Right, yeah. right. And we and not only in programming, but we also do that with events as well. Right. Because right. as you were just, you know, saying your last comments, it made me think of our annual Be My Neighbor Day event. And that is that is an opportunity where once a year we about a thousand people come out to have a shared experience downtown in Muncie uh, with about 30, and we call them neighbors, but they're actually area nonprofits. And they come and they provide an activity for children, and I call them the littles because this is kind of your uh, Mr. Rogers neighborhood, Daniel Mr. Tiger Liz. age, so the littles. So they're providing uh, an activity brothers, for big them. Big sisters, right? Exactly. The, the bigs and the littles. And they're doing a, an activity that promotes being a great neighbor, mm -hmm. while at the same time they're able to talk with the parents about the importance of getting involved in a nonprofit, of the importance of supporting the arts. And so everybody, I feel, really kind of benefits from this really fun, exciting day. And then, of course, you know, they get to meet Daniel Tiger, which That's is right. a big draw. <laughs> a big draw for the young ones but it's been a wonderful event i believe this 2019 will be our fifth right our fifth be my neighbor day so, so you have a considerable operation here first of all beautiful studios in part um, uh, uh, supported by um, an, an ex-alumnus uh, david letterman who right. attended ball state um, uh, how do you fund this operation you just also consolidated uh, Indiana Public Radio with WIPB, the television station. Talk a little bit about how the operations function and how you keep going um, in, in a, a, an environment that always has to think about resources and efficient right. utilization right. of resources. Right. Well, about three years ago, we had some retirees and uh, we had station manager for Indiana Public Radio, station manager for WIPB TV, and then the production unit manager all retired within a six month period. So when we started looking at the organization again, knowing that WIPB and IPR are separate entities and they are have their own brand, but they do a lot of similar things. They mm -hmm. fundraise, they, they have membership, they have underwriting, they have community outreach. And so books to maintain, <laughs> books to maintain <laughs> financials. And so what we did was we took all of those and, for instance, um, Lori became the director of content for both radio and television. Mm -hmm. Michelle, community engagement and grants manager for both radio and television. The general manager, myself, um, as interim general manager now, I'm running both stations, but I have an IT leadership team that we meet monthly. And that's how we kind of, or weekly actually, bi-weekly, right. and we actually figure out how we can help each other run the station because it's a, it's tough for one person, you know, to man handle one station, let alone one person to handle two. And so we combine those resources, and uh, it's been a challenge, but I think we are becoming much better at it, mm -hmm. and cross-promoting is the big thing to do. And, uh, but with CPB funding, you know, you have to have separate books, and you, you have to have, be independent, and, um, and so um, our major source of funding is from Ball State University, there's no doubt. We couldn't do our jobs without Ball State University funding, without the facilities, the space, and the, uh, the amount of time they sure. give us, and um, the amount of uh, staff that we do to produce things. So we can't thank Ball State enough. But then our members and donors, you know, we can't thank them enough. We have to have that as well. Right. Um, state appropriations. We are very lucky to be involved in Indiana Public Broadcasting Station. It's a consortium of uh, 17 public media stations in Indiana. And without that support, there are lobbyists to go to the state. And, and they've been fortunate enough to have state funding since the 1970s. And so that's another avenue of funding. And then grants and things of that nature. And so we, it's, it's, it's actually a community-wide really support is. mechanism yeah. to and keep we, and really the, stations going. The sponsorships and underwriters, we yes. have such amazing right. program yeah. underwriters and sponsors that have been with us for decades and yeah. continue uh, to support the programming yeah. that we have. And, and then new people coming on board all the time because of our local um, projects like now entering in other counties and well, the spelling bee. And particularly in a place like this where we've seen a, um, a reduction in the economic base and we have a uh, municipality that has urban elements, suburban elements, and rural elements. In order to provide balanced services, you need a level of sophistication and you do this with very lean funding and it's an all-in kind of a kind of an approach. You have 
each each element, the individual donors are so invaluable. They Absolutely. also provide you with feedback. The businesses that, that have planted here and want to see the community strong, so important. The civic institutions, government, Ball State University, it's, it, it's all part of a whole. And, and that's, isn't that what creates a community, the involvement, the actual, not only uh, talking the talk, but actually walking the talk or, or talking the walk? Or exactly. Because, exactly. Go ahead, Dan. I was just gonna say, and, and being in the, our, our tower, if you look at our space, is that we are in a very rural area, our, our space. But we also are overlapped with Fort Wayne's PBS station, FYI's PBS station. And we don't, because we're in IPBS, we don't really fight over those those territories. Um, but we have um, a very strong um, donor base, even though nationally we're seeing some decline in PBS stations and radio stations that are under, that are within our budget. Mm -hmm. Our budget's not very big, and so they put those in that budget. But um, we've been very successful, and uh, we'll continue to be that way. But it is a struggle. I'm not going to say it's easy. Right. Um, and with our limited resources, we do the best we can. How do you ensure that you maintain quality, and and how do you uh, work with your various partners to uh, to build such a high functioning team? I think a lot of it has to do with you know hiring the right people that come in with a mindset that you know you're not going to be um, making a million dollars in public television, but they have the interest of being able to be here, mm -hmm. and the they want the passion. Mm -hmm. They want yeah. to be here, exactly. and the <laughs> things that they get to do, you know, um, being out in the community, learning about the community, doing the things that we do, and so I think that's part of it is hiring. The it right shows people. in the attention to detail that consistency. Uh, is so important to quality programming. We really do have an amazing team. Yeah. We have an amazing team of people that not only you know work here full time, but then also take the time to mentor and work with students on a daily basis. That is one of the great advantages that we have of being located on a university campus, is that not only do we get to do all of this awesome stuff, but then students on campus get to be a part of it as well. There aren't a lot of students that can say, once they leave Ball State University, that I worked for an award-winning PBS station or an award-winning NPR station, and that's amazing. And many of those students are hired so they're mm -hmm. actually getting paid to be here. And then we have a lot of students that are in an immersive class. So they're actually doing projects that will go on our air. Mm -hmm. yeah, Wonderful. We have, yeah, we have two really big immersive learning projects now. One on the WIVB side, which is called Cardinal Cinema, and one on the Indiana Public Radio side, which is called The Scene. And they are totally student yes. produced mm -hmm. programs. The Scene is a weekly hour program, and the Cardinal Cinema is actually a class for credit that uh, Chris Fluke, who's the instructor, um, an immersive learning guru, I would say, here on okay. campus. And uh, he recruited 30 students for our first class. And what the students do is they actually write the scripts, they present them to Lori and I and our program um, manager at WIPB, and then it's kind of like what they do is they pitch their story to us that they then write and then they produce, and then we air them. So are, they, are these news stories or well, no, what they're, are they? No, they're short films. Usually short a documentary films. and two short films. Yeah. That's wonderful. And they have, they have a budget, so they have to present a budget with us. And it was interesting this year, they, they forgot to put the awards budget in. So we gave, <laughs> we gave them the awards money. But uh, they do a budget, they have to schedule their own uh, vans, they have to do all this thing. And then they're actually running the show. Once we approve the scripts, um, they end up shooting it and scheduling it. And we've had some very, very good programs on it. And it's, it's um, the only one that I know of where students are taking class credit and their only job is to produce programs for their local PBS station. Now, your your uh, platforms have been traditional in terms of broadcast television on the one hand and radio on the other, but with the advent of all these kinds of devices, everything's becoming instantly available and the, the web is, is itself now a platform because right. you can, mm -hmm. where you see it, whether it's on a computer mm -hmm. or or on a, on a mobile device, they offer different experiences. Right. Sure. How have you adjusted to now a third 
distribution yeah. uh, form. Oh, we're there. We're across all yeah. platforms. We make yeah. sure we are available on all platforms, whether it's downloading the IPR app or streaming it on the Indiana Public Radio webpage, or for WIPB when we have uh, a now entering program, which we do for a live pledge night. We uh, live stream that on our web page and also on our Facebook page because we found that when people watch it on Facebook they chat with each other so it's a whole it's like a watch party and it's a whole conversation uh, that they're having and so we try to make sure that we are covering you know all of those uh, platforms so that people can watch us whenever they want to innovation doesn't stand still and you're not standing still either no way no. well no way. you know we can't That's yeah. right. <laughs> we, just, we wouldn't be able to do that i think didn't we have one now entering where we actually got um members to call in and donate money from california all over the country yeah, all yeah. over the country because we're mm -hmm. actually streaming it out and Correct. so it's not just locally yeah. to this area and that's so, the same with the yeah. spelling bee we broadcast yes. the regional spelling bee every year and that is uh students about 60 kids from schools in six different counties uh and they come to ball state university the sursa performance hall and uh they battle it out word for word uh <laughs> to go on to move on to the scripts national b and we uh, live stream that on our webpage and on Facebook. We've had people in other countries uh, tune in for that. So it's a wonderful opportunity for us to be able to reach uh, more people. And, and the thing program. about it is it's such a big community event, the Spelling Bee. We get people in attendance yes. at Sursa Hall, mm -hmm. and we also get a large viewing area. And, and this is a, a four-hour program kids up there spelling <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so they are good. and it is um and to have that kind of support for something like that it's all community driven i mean they they just enjoy the fact mm -hmm. that they're able to see their kids and their grandkids sure. and nieces and nephews and everybody on mm -hmm. on that platform so. and you're making a good point um when i was uh, working in germany for um for one of the large accounting firms one of my colleagues was from Indiana and he was constantly looking for Indiana content now it was a different different era and it's it's yeah. not like it is today which is like instantaneous sure, right. uh, sure. connection but you have you you serve as an ambassador for the state and the ambassador for the region because uh, not every person who a person identifies as coming from this area is is in this area so Absolutely. so you become the conduit you become the news um, uh, over the fence uh, voice uh, for people who who want to stay connected. Absolutely, exactly. Yeah. And I think the advantage is that all of our public stations in Indiana. I mean, we cover uh, with all of our 17 stations, eight television and nine radios. We cover 95 percent of the state of Indiana to get content. And so you know, and, and everybody is streaming. Everybody has an app. So if you want to be informed about what's going on in Indiana, tune in to, to any of those public media. WIPB and WIPB. Indiana Public Radio. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, there you or go. Any, or any of the other <laughs> local, the other state stations that have an app or have streaming. Mm -hmm. It's you can you can find out just about everything. Well, I'd like to thank you all, Dan Lutz, uh, General Manager, uh, Lori Georgie, Director of Content, and Michelle Kinsey, a Community Engagement and Grants Manager. Thank you so much for sharing the story of WIPB and Indiana Public Radio, and thank you so much for your insights. Thanks thank so much you. for having us. And I'll show you how to download those apps. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>